Okay, Grandma, what was your mom like? She was a very remarkable woman. She uh, was small in stature, so she wasn't a very big woman, but she had a heart of gold. And she was Relief Society president out there in that area for 20-something years, and I can't remember if it was 26 or 7 years. In Calio? Uh-huh, in Calio. And she was so faithful at the in the church, and she she got a lot of those women active, and they'd make quilts and different things, and they, they but one thing I remember most about her, Dad was very supportive of her position. And if there was ever any trouble in any in the valley at all, up or down the valley, they'd all come to mother and dad. And dad would go with her if it need if there was a baby born, mother would go for a few days and take care of the mother and the baby and and dad would go with her to do what he could to establish her and then he'd come home to and take care of us kids. And uh, she would stay as long as she needed to stay. And when there was a death in the valley, uh, dad would always go with her to bathe, help her bathe the bodies and that, if, especially if it was a man. He would go with her and they would bathe the body. And sometimes I remember an instant or two where someone in the valley would die and uh, it would be in the winter and the, the nearest mortician would be in Delta, which was 95 miles away. And sometimes it would take him two or three days before he could get out to, to collect the body. And so mother and dad would prepare the body, wash it and prepare it and have it ready for him to take when he got there. And. Uh, she was faithful about holding Relief Society. I remember every Tuesday afternoon was her Relief Society day, and Beverly and I'd have to hurry right home from school to tend the neighbor's children while they held Relief Society. Uh, we got laughing about that one day. Uh, we used to hurry home to tend the kids so Mother could hold her Relief Society. <laughs> oh, and uh, Dad had a bunkhouse built for when he when he married mother he owned three big herds of sheep and uh, there, he would have like a thousand head of sheep to each herd and he'd have to have hire sheep herders to uh, and he hired a lot of the Basque men out in the Elko area to come and herd the sheep and they were very, very good. But uh, he was always out with the sheep and so it left mother there at the ranch to take care of the, and he always had hired men there to harvest the, the hay and the grain, stuff that he raised for his sheep. And uh, so he had a bunkhouse built for them to stay in so they were in the house with mother. And uh, as the, my brothers got older, they took over the bunkhouse and every stray boy in the valley and our two or three valleys around us knew that if they ever needed a place to stay, they would just come and crawl in bed with whoever was in bed at the bunkhouse and when Mother would call him to breakfast. She never knew if four or 14 kids were gonna file out of that bunkhouse for breakfast. And I remember one of the neighbors asking her, Inus, how do you do it? How do you get, feed all those kids that just come and stay in the night there? And she said, oh, it's not hard. She said, you just fry, I scramble up a few more eggs and throw on a few more pancakes and it works out. <laughs> it didn't ever phase her. <laughs> and the kids always knew that they could have a place to stay when they needed a place to sleep there. Just they crawl in bed with the boys in the bunkhouse. So I used to get a kick out of her doing that, but she had a heart of gold. She just looked after everybody in the valley and knew their names and their birthdays, and she had a remarkable memory. And uh, she knew everybody, and they all knew that they could come there to mother and dad's for advice, and a lot of them did for advice. And 
alone if they needed a loan for certain times or whatever. But eventually, Mother talked Dad into selling his sheep so he could be at home with her and the kids more and so and going to cattle. So he sold his sheep and started raising cattle. So from then on, he raised cattle. But he always had to have just a few sheep on the ranch. And a few to him was like 200 head of sheep. And so it was up to us kids in the summertime to turn the sheep out in the pastures, but we'd have to herd them. Oh, I hated herding those sheep. <laughs> oh, but I'd take a good book with me, and then Dad got on to me, so I'd take in the book and not watch the sheep, and so then he wouldn't let me take the books anymore to read all day on the horse. <laughs> and that was fun, fun memories. He was... He was 47 and she was 22 when they married. But people who lived around them all their life never knew there was that much age difference in their ages. You just never, they were so compatible that you just never knew that they, there was that much difference. And they're, I couldn't have asked for better parents. Both of them, they were excellent. They taught us to work. We had our work to do. And and, uh, but, uh, Dad, one thing I remember about my dad, he never would let us, there was 13 children in the family, but he never would let us squabble among ourselves. He always said if you had that much extra energy, he would put it to the good use. So we knew that if we got in a fight with our brothers or sisters, really, that we'd have extra uh, rows of garden to weed in the garden. And... Uh, but he would work along with us and crawl along and, and pull weeds with us and tell us stories about his early life with the sheep and different things that happened. And so it was interesting. We loved to work with Dad in the garden. So was he considered a shepherd? Well, I, I guess. I don't know. But he loved those sheep. He always had to have a few sheep around and I think that's where my son Clint gets his love of sheep from. I said, oh, Dad would be so pleased with you because he loves sheep. Oh, it was interesting, an interesting uh, childhood because as we grew up, our so we had to make our own social life because there was no show houses or anything to entertain us. And so we'd have these dances at the different communities. And everybody up and down the valleys or whoever lived in the valleys would come from all over to these dances. And we'd dance from, we'd start about 9 o'clock at night to dance. And then about 1 o'clock we'd stop and have a little lunch because all the women would bring something for the lunch. And, and they always had a big pot of coffee on to keep the men <laughs> dancing. And uh, they, then we would dance till about 